Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part four of War in Heaven, War on Earth. Now, we're going to start looking at the war on earth among a physical seed line that the, I think we pretty much proved that the fallen angels had children. Now, I know there's people that'll say, nope, never happened. But, you know, and some of the uh, thing is, they'll say, well, you know, angels can't get married. And they'll quote Mark 12, verse 25, where Jesus said, for when they shall rise from the dead, talking about in the resurrection, humans in the resurrections, believers in the resurrections, he says, for when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels. See, that's proof, right? Uh, but that's not where it ends. It says, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Are all the angels in heaven? Well, in a previous study, we found out that they were cast, one third of the angels and Satan were cast out. See, two words change the entire meaning of this verse. I mean, you know, let's face it. One word makes a big difference. If a man and a woman are facing a minister and uh, he's performing the wedding ceremony and, uh, you know, and one says, I do, and the other says, no, I don't, one word makes a difference. You know, there's a big difference between yes and no. One word. But in this case, for when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. So, not all the angels are in heaven. And it's funny how deceivers always leave out the two words from a Bible verse that proves them wrong. Now, let's take a look. Now, in Genesis 6, it records that there were um, giants in the land in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Were there giants in the land of Israel? Absolutely. It's recorded in the book of Joshua. And uh, David, King David fought one named Goliath. So, they were the Philistines, and they were a tribe of the Canaanites. So, we're going to prove that. Now, in 1 Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 13, it says, And Canaan begat Zidon, his firstborn, and Heth, H-E-T-H. All right, we also record that uh, it was the Jebusite also, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite. S-I-N, Sinite. And the Arvadite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamathite. So, that doesn't sound too good. I don't think I'd want to be a... A Sinite. Just doesn't sound very good, right? Now. All right, let's take a look at something. In Genesis chapter 27 and verse 46. Now, Abraham had a son named Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, Esau 
and Jacob, who God changed his name to Israel. Esau married a Hittite woman. She was a Canaanite tribe. But in Genesis 27 and verse 6, And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. Oh yeah, the Canaanites. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? What good is my life going to be if my son marries a Canaanite? Good question. Why would they be concerned? I mean, if there's not a polluted bloodline running around, why don't uh, she ask the Lord to send some evangelists to win them to win them to the Lord? Uh, praise a Jesus. You know, well, why didn't they do that in the days of Noah? Why did God destroy the earth in a flood? Why didn't he tell Noah, oh, go out and evangelize everybody? After all, unbelieving women married believing men, and they had giants, right? I mean, you know, because believers and unbelievers, when they get married, they always have giants for children, right? At least that's uh, what the demon nominational churches want us to believe. All right, let's take a look at something. In Genesis 26, 34, And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, Judith, the daughter of Biri, the Hittite, and Bashimath, the daughter of Elam, the Hittite. Now, the Hittites were evidently interbred with the uh, Canaanites, Genesis 28, 6. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. So Isaac wanted Jacob to not take a wife from the daughters of the Canaanites. No way. You know, and the churches say, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Today, God loves everybody. You know what? Esau got married, right? Had married and got had two wives. Now, those of you that know the story, uh, we'll do a quick summary here. Genesis 25 and verse 34. Uh, just so you know it, the firstborn son was to get a double portion of the, any inheritance. So if you had five children, the firstborn son would get a double portion of that. Now, that was called the birthright. Genesis 25, 34, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat, uh, eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The birthright was a blessing of the Lord, and Esau despised his birthright. He sold it to Jacob for basically some bread and lentil beans. I mean, seriously. I mean, he hated the gift of God and sold it for basically a bowl of beans. Listen to this. Philippians 3.14. Paul writes, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded that if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. 
let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Guess what Esau's God was? His belly, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, and who mind earthly things. There you go. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of beans. Oh, yeah. So, verse uh, Genesis 28, verse 8 and 9. Now, Esau had already married uh, these two Hittites. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. So, he figured out, well, you know, my father's not real happy with me marrying these Canaanites, so he went and married a, a daughter of Ishmael. All right, uh, in Genesis 36, verse 1, Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Uh, God was not very pleased with the Edomites. Not at all. Genesis 36, verse 2. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Ahalalimabamach, the daughter of Anon, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. So, not good. Now, I did an entire Bible study on Esau, if anybody's interested, send me a note and I'll show you where it's at. But in Jeremiah 49 and verse 10, God says, But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. Now, you know what? I of, I'm of the opinion that the Saudi royal family are the children of Ishmael and Esau. When Esau took the uh, daughter of Ishmael, that's what I believe. Um, do I have any Bible proof? Well, Jesus said, by their fruits ye shall know them. In Obadiah, we read, And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Hmm. Obadiah 1.18 And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. And the house of Esau, for stubble. You know what you do with stubble? You burn it. For stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord hath spoken it. It doesn't sound like the Lord loves Esau too much, does it? Nope. Why? First of all, he despises birthright, the, the gift of God, the blessing. And then he goes and marries into the tribes of the Canaanites. Boom. How does God feel 
about Esau. All right, let's take a look at Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and I hated Esau, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Guess what? And people will tell you, well, you know, that word hated just means that he loved Esau a little bit less than Jacob. Well, you know what? It's the same word where God says, these six things doth the Lord hate. And I'm paraphrasing, you know. Uh, well, let's take a look. Yeah, I don't want to be accused of, uh, you know, not reading things properly here. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. These six things doth the Lord love less. Same word, hate. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Yeah, they want you to say that, well, you know, God really doesn't hate Esau. He just loves him a little bit less than, than uh, you know, Jacob. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Yeah, these six things doth the Lord love less. Yeah, right. Seven are an abomination unto him. You know, hands that shed innocent blood. Yeah, they want you to think that that word hate means love less. Now, God hates hands that shed innocent blood. They're an abomination unto him. Okay? And then if you think God, well, you know, God changed his mind, you know, in the New Testament. Take a look at Romans 9.13. Paul confirms, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Why? He despised his birthright, which was the gift of God, and... He threw away his bloodline marrying into the Canaanites. And I'm going to prove to you by the time we're done with this lesson, this teaching, that the Canaanites were hybrids. Now, in Romans chapter 12, listen carefully. Verse uh, Hebrews 12:14. Follow peace with all men in holiness, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fall, I'm sorry, fail, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Why is Esau called a fornicator? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Who rejected Esau? The Lord did. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Yeah, crocodile tears, people. Why is Esau called a fornicator? 
He was married to his two Hittite wives because he, they were never meant to be legitimate wives. And you got to realize, Esau was Abraham's grandson. One of his two grandsons. Ooh, not good, right? All right, let's take a look at something. In Genesis 10, 19, And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah. The Canaanites are in the land, Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboim, even unto Laisha. Genesis 12, 6. And Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham, and Abraham, uh, Abram passed through the land, unto the land of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Now Satan and his fallen angels must have known that God was going to give them the land of Israel, the promised land, and had these satanic hybrids in the land to fight them. Now, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 24. We're going to read a little bit of this. All right, let's go to uh, Genesis 24, verse 1. And Abraham, so here God had changed his name from Abram to Abraham. I did an entire playlist on Abraham. So if you guys and gals want to do a serious study, go to my playlists. I mean, I've got some playlists that are, you know, 10 hours or more longer on single subjects like this. I mean, Abraham was a very, very important character in the Bible. And Abraham was old, well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abram, Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, and he said, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. That must be an old Hebrew thing, because I don't get it. Verse 3, And I will make thee swear, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife, thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Boy, that sounds really racist, doesn't it? But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So, thou shalt, he's, he made him swear by the God of heaven and earth to not let Isaac get a son of the Canaanites, a daughter, a wife from the daughters of the Canaanites. Pretty serious stuff here. Oh, let's take a look at something in Genesis 38, verse 2. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. Oh yeah, he married a Canaanite woman. Uh, but this, this is not the woman of which Jesus came by. Jesus came by the tribe of Judah, but not by this woman. Nope. He came by another one whose name escapes me right now, but uh, not this Canaanite woman. So if you want to know who those people in the Middle East are, uh, there's a good chance that they are of this Canaanite woman. But that's, well, that and uh, of Esau. Now, in Exodus, let's take a look. In Exodus 13, 7, you know, Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt. So let's read Exodus 3, 3 chapter 3 and verse 17. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt and unto the land 
and unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. That's why they called it the land of Canaan. Exodus 13.5 And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which ye swear unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Now, how much uh, does the Lord love these Canaanites? Numbers 21, 3. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. Oh, yeah. He sent evangelists there, right, to preach to them. No. And they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Hormah. Yep. Deuteronomy 7.1 And the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Deuteronomy 20.17 Listen carefully. God speaking to Israel, But thou shalt utterly destroy them. But, but why doesn't he send evangelists to preach to them the good ways of the Lord? After all, God loves everybody and, and he wants everybody to be saved. No. But thou shalt utterly destroy them namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the, Hi the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. See, Judah messed up because he married into the Canaanites. Not good. Now, the, the Philistines were giants. Listen carefully. Judges 3, 3. Namely, the five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hormoth. Now, Baal, B A A L, or Baal, uh, is the name of a false satanic god, and Hermon is a name of a mountain. Now, I don't put a lot of stock in the book of Enoch, but supposedly that is the name of the mountain where the fallen angels made a, 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 a pact with each other that they would um, marry the women and try to pollute the racial DNA, the genetics of the human women. I don't know if that's true, but uh, I just find it interesting that uh, Hermon is mentioned there. And from what I understand, the United Nations uh, did something on Mount Hermon, if you want to do a little research on that. So, all right, you, know, you want to know how much God loves these Canaanites? First Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 3. The sons of Judah. Now remember, Judah was the tribe of the, the king tribe of Israel. Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. So we read, The sons of Judah, Er and Onan and Shelah, which three were born unto him of the daughter of Shua, the Canaanitess. She was a daughter. She was a Canaanite. And Er, the firstborn of Judah, was evil, in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. God killed the firstborn of Judah because he loved him so much that he killed him, right? Oh, yeah. Now, in the book of Ezra, Judah and Jerusalem went into captivity to Babylon 70 years. 
and then the Babylonians fell, and then the Persians conquered Babylon and allowed Judah to return back to Jerusalem. Ezra, if memory serves me correctly, was the priest, and Nehemiah was the, um, the king. So let's take a look at what happened here. This is a very interesting thing. Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Now they're trying to set up the kingdom again. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves, have not separated themselves from the people of the lands doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Listen carefully. For they, who's they? Israel. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed so that the holy seed hath mingled themselves with the peoples, the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. Now, people, if there's a holy seed, there has to be an unholy seed. And we're not talking about apples and oranges here. We're talking about children for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands bingo don't marry the canaanites bingo now Now, there'll be, if when you uh, discuss this with people, you know what they're going to do? They're going to go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 4. And they're going to say, Ah, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. See, Simon was a Canaanite and, and God changed his mind and made him an apostle. Well, let me ask you a question. Was, his, was he genetically a Canaanite? Or did he live in the land of Canaan? I mean, after all, where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, right? He was born in Bethlehem. But Jesus was called a Galilean because he lived in Galilee. He was also called a Nazarene because he, he, he came from Nazareth. He was called Jesus of Nazareth. So, was he from Bethlehem? Was he from Nazareth? Was he from Galilee? You see, sometimes it's a geographical thing. Me, I was born in Kentucky. But now I live in Florida. Am I a Floridian? Well, I've probably lived 50 years of my life in Florida. So I guess you could kind of say I'm a Floridian. But if I move to Texas, am I a Texan? You know, I, you know, you got to look at it that way. Abraham, if he moved to the land of Canaan, does that make him a Canaanite? And it's the same thing with Ruth. Ruth, who was a, uh, she was called a Moabite. She lived in the land of Moab. Now, personally, I'm positive she was an Israelite that lived in the land of Moab, but she was called a, Moab, a Moabite. Let's take a look at that. In Deuteronomy 23 and verse 3, it says, An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter 
into the congregation of the Lord forever. And of course, modern churches will say, well, you know, yeah, but in the 11th generation, they can come in. Because it says even to the 10th generation. But it says, even to the 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. But then they'll always run to the, the exception. Well, Ruth was a Moabite, and Jesus was, you know, he, he, she was a great, 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 great grandmother or whatever, you know. And they'll tell you that Simon was a Canaanite, one of the apostles. No, they just lived in the land. That's why they were called, you know, like in Ruth 122. So Noemi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, so, you know, Ruth was uh, related to Jesus. You know, so either the Lord changed his mind and the Bible's got errors, or what I believe, they just happened to be called a Moabite or a Canaanite because they happened to live in the land. But that's my opinion. Let's take a look at Zechariah chapter 14 verse 21 yea every pot in jerusalem and in judah shall be holiness unto the lord of hosts and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seeth therein and in that day there shall be no more and in that day there shall be no more the canaanite in the house of the lord of hosts ain't gonna be no Canaanite in the house of the Lord ain't gonna happen they're gonna be gone now if you want to do a little research on your own you can read first Samuel chapter 17 about uh, Goliath and the Philistines you know uh, in verse 4 it says, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. This guy was over nine foot tall, because a cubit is about 18 inches, approximately. I don't know exactly. Um, I don't think anybody knows exactly. So, and a span. I don't know, even know what a span is, but uh, Goliath, he was, he was a giant, one of the giants. Now, in 2 Samuel 21 and verse 20, remember, Gath was where Goliath was from. We just read that, didn't we? So, but in 2 Samuel 21, 20, and there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had, had on every hand six figure, fingers, six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. So, do you see any unbelievers running around with six fingers and six toes, uh, you know, in Genesis 6, you know, they want you to think that believing men married unbelieving women and had these giant monstrosities with six fingers and six toes. Well, guess what? Uh, you'd be surprised how many movie stars have six toes. Marilyn Monroe had six toes. Did you know that? Oprah Winfrey, six toes. Uh, Drew Carey, from what I understand, has six toes. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll have them removed by surgery because they don't want you to know who they are. Oh, yeah. In 1 Chronicles 20, verse 4, And it came to pass after this that there, were, there, that there arose war. War at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sibachai the Hushathite slew Sipiai, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. 
2 Samuel 21, 18. And it came to pass after this that there was a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibichai the Hushanite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. This guy must have been some pretty good guy. <laughs> First Chronicles 20 and verse 6. And yet again, there was war. Why didn't the Lord send evangelists? You know, that's what they want you to think. And yet there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was the son of the giant. So the churches want you to believe that God wanted war with the children of the wicked human women who did not believe. So where are all these giants today playing for the NBA? Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Not politically correct. Verse 1. When the, Lord thy, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before me, the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. What? Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them? Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. So you're supposed to strike them, utterly destroy them, don't make any agreement with them, and don't show them any mercy. Verse 3, here's the punchline. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Don't marry them, people. That's the Bob translation. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall take thou unto thy son. Thou shalt not make marriages with them. I mean, come on, people. Zephaniah 2 and verse 5, Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee. I will even destroy thee that there shall be no inhabitant. Deuteronomy 20, 17, But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Huh. So you're, are you starting to get the idea? God doesn't like these satanic hybrids. They're not, they're no good. And they want you to believe that Simon was a Canaanite and Ruth was a Moabite and God changed his mind and now he's going to, you know, offer him salvation because God just loves everybody, just like Esau. Oh, yeah. And when you read Ezra 9, where it talks about where the uh, children of Judah married the Canaanites, you know what the solution was? Separate yourselves from your sons and your daughters. Separate yourselves. That's what, you know, God, it says God hates divorce, but yet when it came to the Canaanites, he said, oh, separate yourselves. Kick them out. Let them go somewhere else. What do you think the Canaanites, where are the Canaanites today? I mean, are, is there a group of people running around calling themselves Canaanites? No, they changed their names. What do they call themselves? Well, I bet you they call themselves a name that rhymes with the news. That's, what can I tell you? That's what I think, anyways. So, are you starting to get the idea? In John chapter 6, and verse 6, 9, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, 
Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, how did Christ know that he, you know, he was a devil and he was going to betray him? It's in their DNA, I guess. You know, when you go to uh, Matthew chapter 13 and you read the, the wheat and the tares, it makes sense. 13 verse 24, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first, first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right, verse 36. The disciples come and they say, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. This makes so much sense when you understand there's a holy seed and there's an unholy seed. Ezra chapter 9, the holy seed hath mingled themselves with the people of the lands. Verse 40, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast him into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. I'll let you know in a little secret, people. When God talks about separating the sheep, the sheep from the goats, goats are born goats. Just because a goat believes in Jesus, or a goat thinks it's a sheep, it's still born a goat. Now, a sheep is born a sheep and stays a sheep. It may act like a goat. It can act like a pig. But it's still a sheep. And that's just how it works. A sheep does, you know, a goat does not magically become a sheep by believing in Jesus. It doesn't happen. All right, let's go to Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man is come in his glory, and all the holy angels, because guess what? Not all angels are holy people, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. What does the church of Satan have for their symbol? Baphomet? A goat. Remember the Rolling Stones did a, uh, an album called Goat's Head Soup? Uh, that's for you old folks. 
And he shall separate the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Isn't it funny? Communists always call themselves the left. Verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. People read James chapter 2 sometime. You see, your works are proof of what you believe. You're not saved by your works, but what you do is proof of what you believe. Verse 41, here's the punchline. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Did you know hell was, was created for the devil and his angels? For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal." Sheep are born sheep, and goats are born goats. That's just the way it is. You see, people, the fallen angels tried to corrupt the line of humans, probably knowing that the Messiah would come through, you know, the line of Adam and Eve, through Shem, uh, why did Judah, who was a descendant of Christ in the flesh, why did they, you know, they probably sent this beautiful Canaanite woman to, to entice Judah. But God had other plans. He bypassed that. That's an interesting study in and of itself. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this lesson. You know, they tried to corrupt the DNA. You know, the Bible records kind after his kind. You know, what gets me is people will spend hundreds of dollars for a purebred dog. You know, an AKC dog. People will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for for purebred cattle. People will spend millions of dollars for thoroughbred horses. But yet they'll tell you it doesn't matter who your daughter or your son marries? Really? Really? Doesn't matter? The Bible records kind after his kind. You know, it's just the way it is. You don't cross a carrot with a cauliflower. You just, it just doesn't work. You don't cross a, a horse with a cow. It doesn't work. 
Kind after his kind. Cardinals hang out with Cardinals. Blue Jays hang out with Blue Jays. It's just the way it is. God separated his people. Did God make a mistake when he put the Negroes in Africa? And the whites in Europe? And the Japanese in Japan? Matter of fact, do you know the Japanese have a legend that uh, their people came from uh, the gods that came down from heaven and married the women? The gods. And they taught them how to make steel swords. From what my research, the Japanese have been making steel swords for thousands of years. When Europe was in the Bronze Age, the Japanese were making steel swords. We didn't even know how to make steel until a couple hundred years ago. I mean, real steel. You know, they couldn't ever have made trains or high-rise buildings without steel. Uh, steel is 10 times stronger than iron. So you can have something, an ounce of steel, that's as strong as 10 ounces of iron. You know, that's just the way it is. And if you don't know what steel is, it's just uh, iron mixed with carbon. And if you don't know what carbon is, Next time you uh, get ready to take some charcoal or coal uh, to make a fire with, well, that's, that's carbon. So, you know, that's, that's just the way it is, people. It was very important. God wanted his people to marry within their own tribe. In Numbers 36.6, this is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. All right, as a closing, Joshua 23.11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Else, if ye do in any ways, in any wise, go back and clave, clave, unto the remnant of these nations. What nations? The Canaanites. Even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes. What happens when thorns get in your eyes? You turn blind. And thorns in your eyes until ye perish from off this good earth, uh, from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. That was a warning, people. Don't make marriages with them. But guess what? They did. And now the snares and traps and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes are happening until ye perish from off the good land which the Lord your God hath given you. But just remember in Romans chapter 9, 26, Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Romans 11.5, even so, then, at this present time, also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So there you have it, people. All right, well, uh, I hope that uh, you learned something. That's why the Lord says not to marry unbelievers. You know, be, be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's what Paul told us. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and God the Son, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.